Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Plutonium Show. Thanks for joining us and happy Monday. Happy Monday. We are your hosts because, you know, I realize I don't really say our names to um, the newbies who join us. Hi, newbies. Um, Pluto and Zach. I was going to say Zach and Pluto. <laughs> <laughs> Pluto, Zach. So I hope you're all having a much cooler start to the week because uh, it is disgustingly, sinfully, illegally, unbelievably hot where we are for spring. We're only two weeks into spring. Uh, it, not according to the forecast. Yeah, it's an inferno. It's yeah. it's like a global emergency, but no one cares because it's Australia. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's like you guys live in forty degree heat anyway. Yeah, it's a perfect day to go to the beach, I guess. No, so today we're going to be talking about the Inrictus games. You know what Rictus means? You told me before, but tell me again. It's basically either a really rigid, painful looking grin or grimace, like. Yeah. Am so, I doing it right? Am I Meghan Markle? <laughs> well, you're not Meghan Markle, thank goodness. And yeah, that's pretty much every single time she's on camera. Yeah. She cannot smile genuinely for the life of her. And it looks painful, but we've seen plenty of that rictus grin, not just at the Inrictus games, yeah. which she completely took over, but we'll get to that. We saw it prior. So I showed you that really bizarre pap you know, the paparazzi shot of her at In-N-Out Burger, right? Yeah. So she's at the drive-thru, as you all know, and the paparazzo is standing, it looks to be where the counter is, where you order and pay. Mm -hmm. And the young boy who was working the counter had to literally move his head out of the way <laughs> so that the photographer could get a clear shot of Megan and she flashed him her famous rictus grin. Oh my gosh. And I can imagine the, the guy working it in and out I, that Eminem moment it's like you know who that is who yeah that's so and so who like probably probably doesn't have a clue who she, she is she probably drove up and the employees were like yep can I take your order and she rocked up to the window and they're like here's your order and yeah <laughs> so we were all thinking oh she staged that because she wanted to upstage her own husband which you know we wouldn't put it past her I mean that's exactly what she thinks but it's not like she would ever be effective at that well, she kind of is when you think about it, because we do the me when I say we, the media, and then YouTubers kind of take what the media puts out, right? Because that's all we have access to. Because everyone says, "Oh, stop covering them." Stop. I'm just like, well, that's what the media is putting out, though. Yeah. If the media stopped covering them, then we wouldn't have stories to cover and yeah. comment on. So um, it turns out, you know, she she arrives late, mm -hmm. which I have no idea why. Yep. There is no plausible reason. She gives us one. Oh, okay. So we still don't know why because, you know, Megan can never tell the truth. Bingo. But everyone is correctly, I think, in my opinion, saying, and you tell me what you think, it's because she wanted to steal the show. You know, if she arrived with Harry on time, she would have had to share the limelight. Yeah. But by arriving a number of days late, it's her grand entrance. It reminds me of her own wedding when she wanted to walk alone for the first half and then King Charles meets her with no maid of honor, no bridesmaid. Yeah, that screams one of the greatest insecurities known to man because... <laughs> known to woman as well. Known to woman. <laughs> because I can imagine even insecure brides in modern day-to-day -day life, they like the idea of bridesmaids, right? It's like, these are these are my right or dies. These are my compatriots and, you know, in yeah. hard times and... Or even if, I mean, Megan doesn't have a sister, but yeah, like Catherine had her sister. Yeah. I bet that's why Megan didn't want a bridesmaid, by the way, because um, I remember I was just a kid when Catherine got married and I was on a plane, actually. My mom and I were traveling and her sister Pippa stole the show because of her backside. So Aye. I bet you that Megan saw that and went, yeah, no, I'm, ain't nobody staying in my limelight that day. <laughs> I, I got a better theory. It's because there was no one that could be a bridesmaid with her because she has no one. Look, she has fake friends. She had her Jessica Maroney stylist lady that she since dropped, of course, because yeah. it's Megan. But she could have been um, the maid of honor. In fact, she tried to have her Pippa backside moment as she went up the stairs. Rumor has it that she told the photographers, here's your Pippa moment. 
And then she swung her hips really in an exaggerated manner. Oh my this is God. a 40 plus year old woman at the time, mind you. I believe she was a little bit older than Megan. I, I, I'm going to go ahead and say it wouldn't matter if they were 20. That's just, I just, I have no words for it yeah. because, okay, it's a wedding, right? This isn't the club dance floor, right? This yeah. is a wedding and a wedding is someone else's day, right? Yeah. And the fact that I'm saying this about Megan of all people, someone that I really could not care less about. Yeah. Even doing that at Meghan Markle's wedding is just... Despicable. How do you even like... But like attracts like. Exactly. So we get to the speech. She makes this off-the-cuff speech as if it was off the... It, it was off the cuff and the sky's green. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did you guys know? <laughs> so she makes this off-the-cuff speech where she had to throw in the reason why she was late. <laughs> Milkshakes for the kids. So she, unknowingly, because her IQ was that low, gave us all the reason for that drive through staged shot. And for anyone wondering, because when I posted it in the community, uh, as a community post, uh, someone just innocently asked, well, how do you know it's back grid? And then I said, you always look at the watermark. There's always a watermark in the photo. And yep. if not, the articles that publish it will always say who the photo belongs to for copyright reasons. Hmm. And Backgrid was the one. Can I just say, just this is a bit off the cuff. <laughs> um, the fact is that, it now, though? <laughs> the fact that Megan coherently tied a previous event that she was at being the in and out drive through to something she was currently doing the fact that that she even thought to tie those two together and go oh i'll use my pap moment as an excuse is actually pretty like uh brilliant for her <laughs> like oh so you th <laughs> for her that's 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 an accomplishment that's yeah because normally yeah. what she says and the reality is so far apart again new york car chase right yeah. it's like how did you wow are you growing up <laughs> never well but. unfortunately the events that succeeded that speech proved otherwise we all know that usually when Meghan Markle is involved with anything, it has to always be all about her. Yep. And of course, we expected it to happen this year as well. The only time she behaved at the Invictus Games was at the trials, I think. I'm not, I'm not sure because the Invictus Games were held in 2018 in Sydney um, when they were first married. I think she behaved there. But then I remember even the... Earlier in that year, they held the trials and she just wore the Invictus, Invictus polo, mm -hmm. black jeans, you know. I don't remember her being just attention grabbing. Yeah. Because she was behaving at the time. Mm, she wasn't she, sure what she could get away with yet. Well, she didn't secure the ring on her finger. Uh. I'm talking about the trials now, not the actual Invictus games. Yeah, she was in Australia. I don't know what her game plan is. I, you know, I guess she was getting enough attention because she was still a royal and pregnant yeah. and, you know, all that. Last year, she wasn't that bad apart from the fashion show that she, you know, <laughs> she uses the Invictus Games as a, as a runway. Yeah. Effectively. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to that, won't we? Well, of course. Yeah, because she did the same this year. But believe it or not, it wasn't the worst part. She just keeps getting worse every year is what I'm trying to say. Last year, it was the clothes. Yeah. But her behavior wasn't over the top. I don't remember us covering anything exaggerated in terms of the way she was acting yeah. last year, but her wardrobe was ridiculously extravagant given the event, given the people who were competing, given most people wouldn't earn as much as one of her outfits cost in their whole life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And this time it wasn't any better. I read that she wore in total... 300,000 pounds worth of clothes and jewelry in just six days. My goodness. And I did notice that she would change three times minimum per day. 
What? I, I don't know why. It Honestly, if someone knows why, other than the fact that she's merching, because, you know, of course, her PR machine saying, oh, everything she's worn has sold out. I yeah. Mean, okay, cool. And the sky is green. That's well, again, what I think yeah. about that. Uh, there's some talk that she crashed a website, which was like a factory outlet website anyway. It wasn't exactly geared for, you know, factory outlet websites are for just the, the surplus. Yeah. You know, surplus damaged a little bit, something wrong with them. And they sell for really cheap. So I wouldn't imagine they spend a lot of money to maintain that website. Yeah. And let me just like split off for here for a second. Uh, most websites, retail websites, are actually run in shambles because if you've ever tried to buy something online and encountered errors, I feel like every time I buy something online, there's always errors, there's always problems. It's Unless it's something as big as Amazon, all the little shops come with their own problems. So crashing a website is not an accomplishment. It's just day-to-day -day life for online retail. Well, Megan doesn't think so. So yes, that was vulgar, but you know what? I thought that was the worst of it. There was, and I brought this up with you because I was that appalled, enraged, and you don't have to be a service person like myself to feel that way. The photos of her marching, and even the video of her marching, with I believe she was leading the UK veterans, by the way, which oh. makes it all the more disgusting. I mean, if she was with the Americans, I still don't understand... What a woman dressed like her. I mean, Harry is supposedly a veteran. In the military, we have standards, especially with your appearance. Mm -hmm. I remember I had short hair once and I had to put a hundred bobby pins on my head to secure and, you know, to secure every flyaway and make it look like a really nice sleek bun because yeah. they accepted nothing less. Yeah. Once, this is very early on, I believe my first night at the officer training institution I was at, and this sergeant makes a beeline for me at the mess hall. And that was a kid, by the way. I was really young. And he just has a go at me. He yells at me in front of everyone for five minutes straight about how my hair was in the worst condition he'd ever seen any female's hair. Which, by the way, my hair was tied in a bun, but because it had layers, I think one of them went loose. And it was mm. my first night. We weren't even in uniform yet. I was still in my suit. That's the military. Yeah, I mean, he probably says that to everyone who has one strand out because he wants to make them feel small because that's what they do in training. But it's, it still yeah. goes to show, I mean, look at it from a, a war point. Uh, a war point of view if you're on a battlefield you wouldn't want to miss a shot or be you know caught in in danger because you had one strand out that happened to be blocking your eyesight it's it's not just it's not that um we take pride in the way we look because it comes down to that that discipline and mm -hmm. the fact that you're not representing yourself you're representing your country yeah so there's a whole thing that goes into it, even the way we make our beds. It's all about you do things the way they're meant to be done, you know? Yeah, and I'm glad that you mentioned that too, because that's exactly the first thing I thought of it just now talking about this, is how does the UK feel about Meghan Markle, the person who has nothing nice to say about the citizens of the UK, how do they feel about having her represent them? lead their soldiers exactly and do it walking because when you look at the photo even though it's a still image you can tell there are people marching and then there's one person there walking like they're walking down a runway you can tell the way she's walking yeah i don't know i've seen videos she does walk a little bit awkwardly to be honest but i mean i'm surprised that the veterans agreed to this did they have a choice it was prince harry I mean, look, the way she was dressed made me, makes me think it's impromptu. Yeah. Because when you look at her from the back, it looks like she's just wearing a blazer. It looks like she's not wearing anything else. And she's wearing flip-flops, essentially, even though they're designer. She's wearing slippers. I mean, again, I cannot emphasize how this goes against everything the military stands for. It's Everything. Like, it's like she gets off on 
being in places she doesn't belong. But the thing is, in some photos, you can see Harry in the background looking at her. Mm. And I'm just, this is my, the original point I was trying to make. For a veteran, you sure have no respect or standards for your own military because how can you, in good faith, allow your wife to make a spectacle of herself like that? She mm-hmm. looked like she was a drunk tourist yep. who ran into a formation yep. and stood there to take photos with them. Spot on. I couldn't have put it better myself. I think that we all know that it wasn't Harry's decision because Harry doesn't get to make decisions when Megan's around. I agree. But even if it wasn't her decision, he should have talked her out of it or told her, go change into one of your other 600,000 outfits that you brought with you. Because she was all covered up the day before Mm -hmm. in a ridiculous outfit with huge pants that were 10 times too wide and long for her. Mm -hmm. But you can't talk someone out when they are that lost in their heads when they are that delusional and narcissistic you can't have a conversation with them you can't negotiate anything with them this was what megan says megan does she made an absolute fool she literally looks drunk yep no woman in her right mind would have done this and would have dressed this way i mean the marching in itself is despicable Mm -hmm. especially considering that it was the uk the outfit the slippers, the slippers. Yeah. What are you, in Malibu? Exactly. In the Gold Coast? Like, what are you doing? It's a holiday for her. And she wears pointy high heel, professional looking stilettos on a basketball a basketball court. I was going to say, I'm surprised she didn't do the heels. She did the heels on a basketball court. Yeah. But not, you know, heels would have looked better. Heels with long pants that hid them. That's the way she likes dressing. Yeah. That would have looked better. Mm -hmm. This is so disrespectful. It It is is so disgusting. I thought her antics were bad enough already because I don't know what it is about her this year. I don't want to be mean, but she is a skeleton. She is emaciated. And I wonder what, whether it's playing with her head because she's starving. Yeah. There's no other way to put it. She looks manic. Mm-hmm. There are some photos where she actually looks unhinged. Pretty sure she would fall into a classification of anore- anorexia. I mean, obviously, we're not qualified mm. to say that. But there are some photos in particular that are very, very concerning. Yep. You know, this is beyond, oh, Megan is, you know, being Megan. This is new territory for me, observing her. There's mm-hmm. concern, you know. She was, she's gone from such a radiant, beautiful woman with youth in her face and she had a bloom and she had a glow not that long ago. Yeah. And I used to always call her beautiful, right? Yep. That's something you've always stuck with. She's lost it. And it's, yeah. it's sad. And even as a guy, even as a guy, right, who wouldn't normally notice these things, it's such a drastic change that even I notice it. I don't even have to look for it. I just know that okay where did all the weight go and it can't be healthy especially losing that amount of weight in what as far as i'm concerned is a a short period of time right yeah i mean when she was photographed going to the woman's shelter dressed in all that you know thousands of dollars worth of clothing and jewelry that was march i think and she looked normal yeah even uh the catastrophic car chase Mm -hmm. actually may only a few short months ago yeah and she looked fine yes she lost weight but she looked fine there was no concern exactly now it's ver- veering into like you said it looks like anorexia obviously again no we're not qualified no qualified to say that but it looks like it's in that dangerous territory mm-hmm. and honestly i hope she's okay in that regard and i hope whatever's going on that's causing it gets resolved but more importantly i hope it's not on purpose i hope she's not trying to play this narrative of you know, getting into a divorce with Harry and going, this is all the stress he put me through. Look at how much I was emaciated. If you look at photos of me from that time, I was, I was skin and bones. I wasn't eating. I was thinking along those lines, not exactly what you said, but I was also thinking it could be a play to maybe there's even a Netflix thing coming up at some point. She's going to say all the stress of all the hatred of everyone hating on me. That too. It's, but... 
it's, it's viable. It's a very viable. It, it could would fall in line with something despicable that she would do, and she would put her health at risk if it meant that she would get more views and more people talking about it and more sympathy. Yes, I mean she did it with Oprah. She did it when she referenced an event where she said she was suicidal that day. Of course, we have no proof whether you know that's mm-hmm. true or false, but she's done it before. She's told people to, to cast their minds back to that photo. Look at me there. I was miserable there. She could easily do it again. Yep. She could purposely gain weight, get better, mm. and talk about that dark time. And don't get me wrong. Um, there are some points where that they make that are valid. But I've always said this throughout the years of you know the show. They attach their agenda. They attach their yeah their agenda to a valid point. Yep. Or a valid movement. Mm-hmm. But they have ulterior motives. Absolutely. So Absolutely. What I, so what I mean is, yes, there is a lot of unfiltered, unrestricted, out of control hatred on social media. Mm-hmm. We were talking about this last night. Yep. It is off the charts. And for content creators to have to put up with it day in and day out. And I'm talking about good content creators, not people who stir controversy on pur- controversy on purpose. Yeah, not people who actually, you know, stir the pot. They invite it. But for many content creators, this is a workplace for us. We treat it as a workplace. And then you have random people who God knows what's going on in their own lives. Yep. Come and spew the worst vitriol, even though you did nothing to harm them or anyone. You're just voicing your thoughts on a topic that you took the time to prepare and share with the world. And the hate from, again, just ad hominem attacks. Strangers. Yeah. People who have never met you in their life. And they attack you, not your content. Yeah. So there is this element of, I do wish that, because, you know, Meghan Markle talked about this in the past, about how social media has no guidelines when it comes to that it should be a violation of policy Mm -hmm. and your account should be banned if you are that hateful and if you bully creators and if you bully you know if you're just unnecessarily hateful absolutely but we're not doing that so i would never condone that kind of behavior directed at her even though she invites it and i hope something's done about it but when it comes to megan it's just it rings hollow when she advocates for these things because it's what she does to her own family. Exactly. We're not talking about someone who's just come out and worn an outfit and gone back into hiding. We're talking about someone who actually causes harm and distress to everyone around them. Someone who has left, for lack of a better term, a trail of betrayal, of people who have had trouble working with her, people who don't have nice things to say about her, who have dealt with her face to face. And then we see the things she says, the lies she tells about her family, about anything around her. She can't even tell the truth about her own wedding. And so we're not dealing with someone, we're not dealing with someone who we just see on a runway as much as she wishes that it was that. We're dealing with someone who everything that comes out of her mouth could be damaging and it's not even just a runway if she were actually a good person if she had a good message if she wasn't a force of evil you know if she was like Catherine, i'm just using as an example but there are many other good people out there obviously then the hate would be unjustified and if Catherine spoke out against it it would make sense yes but again i don't justify hatred towards megan but when she speaks out against it We can't take it seriously because she is the perpetrator of that very thing. Exactly. She says, do as I say, not as I do. Exactly. So she can say whatever she wants. But But as soon as someone gives it back to her, and here's the other thing too, when you're giving it back to her, it could be a well, level-headed, well-thought-out criticism of something she's done. It's not a personal attack. It's, hey, you did this thing that was wrong, right? Exactly. I have no... I'm, I'm glad you brought it up because... Obviously, we provide a lot of constructive criticism towards, you know, in the topics that we talk about. And I welcome constructive criticism. Yep. You know, our audience, we're really lucky. They are not only supremely polite and they tell us when they disagree, they tell me all the time, but they do it in a constructive manner. Yep. I don't expect an echo chamber in my comment section. In fact, that would be a nightmare to me. Constructive criticism does not equal hate. Yes. They're two very different things. So... You know, this isn't the case of, oh, you can dish it to Megan, but you can't take it. No, no one should take it. 
no one, not even Megan, technically, no one should take hate Mm -hmm. and bullying and violence. But constructive criticism is good for everyone. Yes. So it's really unfortunate with the Invictus Games because it really has become the Megan and Harry fan convention. But I don't even know if it's authentic. I think people... The Sussex Squad were there, by the way. Like, literally, there's a clip of them saying, Megan, the Sussex Squad is here. Like, it was a weird, weird voice, weird accent. I'm not going to apologize. They they have said vile things to me, so they can go, you know. My goodness, <laughs> I just can't believe. And she ignored them. Oh, my goodness. That is so great. Because you know what? At the end of the day, these people who are ride or die for Megan... Megan wouldn't care if they died. That is the point of this hate. It's like, you people ride so hard. Not you people. The people who are horrible on social media, usually it's because they're defending another creator or another celebrity, right? Yeah. And they ride so hard for them, like the Sussex Squad does for Megan. And then here, we have an example of how she, she'll she barely glance at you, mm-hmm. let alone stop for a photo. And you guys go ride, you know, till the end for her name. And I do wonder whether you would do the same for your actual real life friends. Because no, because I have they're f- not celebrities. Well, yeah, I have a feeling that people just, those people in particular who ride so hard for Megan and the like, if their friend was in need and wanted them to testify at court, you know, do something uncomfortable for someone else, they'd be like, sorry. Can't do it. Yep. Can't I, make it. But I'll definitely be at the next uh, PAP event for my <laughs> favorite celebrity. So, yes, it's so sad because when you Google the Invictus games now, not now, ever since Megan showed up, really. It's all about Megan. It's like the Daily Mail is getting paid by WME to put out 22, I think someone said 22 articles in six days, if not more, about what she's wearing. What about the veterans? Yeah, you mean the people that the Invictus Games are actually about? Exactly. You mean the point? I mean... What was that? I'm trying to remember this off the top of my head, but what was that statistic that there are so many homeless veterans in a country that's also also giving benefits to others and then not giving any of those benefits to the homeless? Well, unfortunately, I think that's the UK itself. I've been reading a lot about that. There are veterans who fought in World War II, so they're old and they're being ousted from their homes by landlords. Meanwhile, There's the whole that immigration crisis. I'm not going to get into it because obviously that's political. We don't do politics on this channel. No politics. Um, But from a humanitarian standpoint, I mean, I sound like Megan now. It's not a political issue. It's a humanitarian issue. But this time it really is. (laughs) Yeah. Leaving veterans homeless while, you know, taking care of others is just, it doesn't sit well. These people fought for their country. Regardless of what anyone thinks of war, the fact that someone went and put their lives on the line for what they believe to their heart, is a noble cause. Hmm. The fact that they went out there and defended people they don't even know. Yep. And then then, they're homeless at 94 years old. That's disgusting. It's really a travesty. And yet, instead of talking about that... We're talking about Megan's clothes. Exactly. Good job, Daily Mail. 22 articles. Yep. It's disgusting. Um, I don't know what happened with the veterans. I, I heard Australia won something, came first in something. But because, you know... The defense force in Australia here, which I'm a part of, is very proud of them. But I don't know anything else. Because Megan has taken over. And if she actually cared about anything at the Invictus Games, she would be bringing attention to those veterans, not herself. But she doesn't care. That's why she should have just worn an Invictus Games polo, like I believe Harry was doing before she arrived. Any photo of Harry I saw... Before her arrival, I I think he was in the polo. She should have been wearing the polo, black jeans, baseball cap, hair tied up, low key. Be there to support your husband and this amazing, you know, um, amazing endeavor. Yeah. Which Harry did not establish, by the way. That's something that their PR like loves to spin. It was actually the Royal Foundation, Prince William and Harry. Mm. And of course, palace staff. Yeah. But my point is, Harry clearly cares about it, although I wish he cared about it more because maybe then he would put his wife in line when it comes to behaving inappropriately and shaming the Invictus Games. I'm going to go one step further. Megan shouldn't have turned up at all. Megan should have stayed home with her kids Mm. and let Harry do his thing, let him bring attention to the veterans because it's 
a matter of Megan can't be trusted. Even if someone gave her a pep talk and went, all right, this year the, these yeah. Invictus games are going to be different and we're going to be respectful to the veterans and you're not going to walk down there like you're on a freaking runway. She would have said yes to that person's face mm-hmm. if she was pretending to be amicable and then turned around and done the exact same thing. She can't be trusted. I agree. I agree. I think in the early days, maybe there was hope for her to show up and be the supportive wife that she said she was. But no, I think especially after this year, I would be very surprised if she's there in the next one, which is Toronto. Um, Is it Toronto? Canada in general. You know, not that I want to belabor the point because we're running out of time, but I'm starting to think you were right. I, I don't know if you said this, actually, correct me if I'm wrong, but when you said she probably stood in formation with the soldiers in that outfit without her husband even knowing, without her husband even approving it. Or told him at the very last minute, this is happening and there's nothing you can do to stop it. And when I say husband approving it, I don't mean, oh, you know, a husband, you know, you all know I'm not that kind of woman and I vouch for equality. As in the person who's actually running the show? Running, you know? the, running the show is a veteran. Yep. You know, knows how the, knows military standards, uniform appearance, how much it, it, how important it is to the service to look a certain way and oh my goodness so yeah um I, I agree with you after that stunt the marching i can almost forgive the stupid clothes changes whatever it's the only time in the year she gets to be on any kind of public stage at this point mm-hmm. otherwise it's just pap strolls and that's why she's making the most of it because she knows that her quote-unquote career is going down the drain. She knows the world is turning on her yep. because as much as she likes to say that she doesn't read anything online, all she does is read things online. I'm surprised we don't have more pap shots of her on her phone. Oh, that's right. The paparazzi don't care unless they, she's paying them. Exactly. <laughs> oh, forgot that little detail. But it's just... She should have just stayed home, saved yeah. herself the embarrassment this year because it was very embarrassing what she did. And... uh bought her kids milkshakes and drank it you know maybe drank them with with them to put on a few pounds because it's just not this is not body shaming you know showing concern Mm -hmm. is not body shaming yep and um why couldn't the kids have milkshakes before the invictus games and why couldn't the kids come yeah because there were many kids that really didn't like megan by the way (laughs) but you know what the kids would upstage megan yes and Megan cannot be upstaged by her own kids. She can't be upstaged by anyone. Well, why weren't they with her when she got the milkshakes? Shouldn't they be in the back seat like the rest of us? You know, as kids, our parents will go to the drive through and what do you got? What do you kids want? I mean, they're super young, but you still ask them. I believe the In N Out Burger place she went to was like two hours away from where she lived. What? So they the would have hell? melted anyway. That's why the whole story is bogus. Yeah, and it still makes more sense than just about anything else she says. <laughs> so that's uh, it really for this week. The sad thing is I wish I could say more about the Invictus Games. I saw the closing ceremony. It was nice. Megan wasn't a focal point of that one, thank goodness. That's why it was nice. It, exactly. But other than that, I really have nothing more to say because there is nothing more to say. Mm -hmm. The coverage was about Megan. And even if we wanted to say more about the veterans, we don't know what happened. Yeah. Hey, Daily Mail, maybe think about the veterans. Oh, no, sorry. The veterans don't get as much clicks through your website. It's so sad. It's gone from, I never watched it before. You know, I wasn't really interested in the royal family before Megan joined. But I heard that it was quite the affair. Uh, Presidents would show up, like Obama showed up in 2014, um, I believe, Joe Biden showed up, not when he was president, but at some point, important people, whether you like them or not, world Mm -hmm. stage heavy hitters would show up. And now you have a couple of, I mean, Rita Ora is a known singer, but again, no offense to the person with her. Some, you just get some lower tier people that people don't even know about because that's the kind of pull that the Invictus game has now. Yeah, I think that it says a lot that Megan and Harry aren't getting the same hits because there are probably some people in the world who would rather not be seen with them. Well, they asked uh, Jill Biden and she turned them down. Exactly. Jill Biden would rather do other things. Again, regardless of whether you like her or not, she doesn't want to be anywhere near Megan. No, because she wants to maintain a good relationship with the family that matters, which is the royal family. 
Yep, and it just goes to show that everything Harry and Meghan touch, particularly Meghan, because Harry could have succeeded in this, but everything they touch together, or Meghan touches on her own, turns to hell, turns to dust. Sad, sad. Hopefully they'll learn. I mean, I don't even know if they're going to be aware of the backlash, probably, because that's all they do. Mm. You know, they're probably in the hotel room at Dusseldorf just looking through social media comments because that's all they care about. But she won't read the room. She's incapable of doing that. She would do it again in a heartbeat. I'm hoping he will <laughs> grow a backbone. and I don't know, just, you know, one segment of his vertebrae. <laughs> just put your foot down and um, just say, listen, listen, just let's, let's make this about the veterans. He can even sweet talk her and say, you're too popular. If you show up, you overshadow everyone, honey. So just just let it be about the veterans next time, okay? Then, then she'd be like, no, I'm going now. That This is my event. Yeah. I am the captain now. Yeah, well, the, here's the thing about a backbone. If Harry had any backbone, Megan wouldn't do half the stuff she does, or they wouldn't be married anymore. That's true. But he doesn't, and so he will continue being her lapdog. Until she chooses maybe to discard, or I don't know, may, maybe he'll wake up. Who knows? But we always say now he's almost just as bad as she is. He what is. he's allowed her to do, you're complicit. So, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that's it. We're going to start making these a little bit shorter. I think it'll be easier for us and probably more enjoyable for the audience because I was told by a YouTube manager that any video over 10 minutes is considered very, very long. I watched an hour and a half video <laughs> yesterday. What? So, what on earth? <laughs> well, it's what I call TikTok syndrome. Yes. Most people just have the attention spans that are, you know, limited to TikTok length videos. So if you've made it this far, thank you so much. <laughs> we really appreciate you. No, truly, truly. And that's why I think we have a beautiful audience because one of the things, you know, the the retention rates are pretty high. Yeah, it's so, incredible. Yes. Thank you. I'm glad we, you know, again, I'd like to think like attracts like yep. because we can still read books and watch full feature length movies and watch oh, yeah. long f- videos and not lose interest. So. Yeah. When they tell me a movie's two and a half hours, I don't go, that's too long. And I certainly <laughs> don't pull out my phone in the middle of a movie. One guy pulled out his laptop and started <sighs> playing a video game. That was crazy. Remember that? That was crazy. He like, we're watching a movie. Yeah, in the cinema. Oh my <laughs> so, gosh. All right. Um, hope you all have a really great week ahead of you. This might be uh, a, the last podcast for a little bit. It's not really a long hiatus. Um, you'll find out why at some point soon, hopefully. But it's nothing serious, nothing bad. Um, just pra- practically, it'll be difficult to carry it on for the next month or so. But we will be back. Solo videos will be coming up as usual. And thank you. Just thank you for being you. Um, I really appreciate you all because I just see how different you are to other audiences. I'm not saying, we, you know, there aren't good people out there with for other creators. But I see so much hate in the comments of other creators. And, and then I look at mine and it's just predominantly positive. I know I went off on, you know, the attacks that we all inevitably get. But the majority is just pure positivity constructive criticism and respect so thank you and we hope to see you in the next one we'll see you then bye